Ben, you're sure we can get back in at least two weeks now, ain't you? Oh, of course. Now, quit worrying, Roy. The San Francisco court has a trial scheduled. Shouldn't take more than a couple of days. Not with your testimony. I'm always glad to help out, you know that. Especially as long as you're paying all expenses. Yeah, well, it'll still be worth it. Just to get those timber shocks behind bars. I know what you mean. Yeah. Iron! Yeah. Find a blade that westbound stage at. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 the, the, uh... The sta stagecoach. Well, it's late. Uh, oh. No, uh, it's don't late. tell me something I already know. What's got into you, anyway? Oh. You're as nervous as a pole cat in a perfume factory. Uh. Here she comes, Roy. Town, eh, Fairfax? If you say so, sir. I do say so. May I assist you, ma'am? Oh, thank you kindly. Ah, oh, Paul, how are you? Oh, Paul, I'd like you to meet Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford, my Paul, Ben Cartwright. Pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. A great pleasure. Forbes. Uh, Paul, this is Miss Sissy Summers. How you do? Summers? Uh, there is an adequate hostelry. Hmm? Oh, 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 of course, of course. Just up the street, the uh, Palace Hotel. Thank you. Fairfax? Coming, sir. Fine fella. Fine gentleman indeed. Oh, no finer than you, Mr. Cartwright. The way you protected me against that uncouth loud. <laughs> there was to have been someone to meet me, a Mr. Peabody. Hiram Peabody. Oh, Hiram. Well, ma'am, you ain't far away. He's right behind you, right there in the stage office. He is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right in there? Right in there. Oh, dear. I'm sorry to do this to you, Ben, but I can't go after all. What do you mean you can't go with me? Without you there, I don't stand a chance of winning the case. I want to go, but I just can't leave this town without any law. Well, you hired that deputy from Placerville, didn't you? I ought to know. I'm paying a salary. You're supposed to be paying a salary. And he's supposed to be on the stage. But he ain't. He let me down. And because of that, you're going to let me down. Ben, I don't want to, but I have no choice. With Clem out of town, there's no other sheriff to watch over things. I think I got the answer, but I gotta ask one more question. His name by chance wasn't Roscoe Willard, was it? Do you know him? Oh, we, uh, we became briefly acquainted, yeah. Oh, got a little brisk there toward the end. Uh, last time I seen him, he was walking back to Placerville. He wasn't in too good a shape. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's real fine, horse. <sighs> I'm not about to ask the why or wherefore, but uh, because of what happened, whatever it was, Sheriff Coffee can't go with me to San Francisco, and I stand to lose a rather considerable sum of money to a bunch of timber thieves. And you beat up on Roscoe Willie. Well, I guess he ain't as tough as his reputation makes out to be. Oh, he, he's tough, all right, Roy, but when my hair gets all worked up, I, I recognize a match for him, all right. Yeah, you're a match for him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you would be a match for him, wouldn't you? Roy? Yeah, boss? Raise your right hand, please. Oh, wait a minute. Now, I ain't gonna be no sheriff, Paul. Raise your right hand. Oh, boy! Raise your right hand. People. Boy! Raise it. I do.
sheriff of Virginia City. I didn't either, Miss Summers. I, I didn't either. Hey, did you find, uh, did you find Hiram? No, I didn't. He's not in his office, like you said. That's funny. Well, no need to fret. He's around here someplace. Old Hiram's one of our most dependable citizens. Well, I knew he would be. <laughs> Do you know him well? Hiram? Oh, shucks, ma'am. Everybody in town knows Hiram. Fine fella. He don't drink or cuss or do none of them bad things. Goes to church every Sunday, sings in the choir. It's like a tenor. I don't know how good you make me feel, Mr. Cartwright. I mean, Sheriff. <laughs> See, I, I just wouldn't marry him if he weren't all those things you said. Marry him? You and... You and old Hiram? <laughs> you, you gonna get married? <laughs> ha! Well, I'll be that burned. You, you talk like you ain't even met him. <laughs> I haven't, exactly. Oh, no, we've corresponded for over a year, and one thing led to another, and finally he wrote to me and asked me to come west and be his wife. He's a mighty lucky feller, ma'am. But where can he be? Oh, he's probably just on a on an errand or something. He'll be back directly. I'm so anxious to meet him. In the meantime, I'd best get a hotel room. Would you help me with my luggage? Oh, sure thing, ma'am. Uh, which one of these is yours? All of them. All of them? I can certainly see why they made you sheriff, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah. I bet nobody would ever try to put anything over on you. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't too easy. <laughs> I didn't know you were sheriff of Virginia City. Mr. Forbes, I, I wasn't until just a few minutes ago. Remember that big fella on the stage? Well, never mind. Now, I want you to meet some gentlemen. This is Mr. Green, and this is Judge Franklin. Thank you. This here's my little brother, Joseph. And this is Candy. This is Mr. Forbes. He oh, came yes. in on the stage Howdy. with me. Cattlemen's ranchers. I'd have known it even if Mr. Cartwright hadn't told me. And you two are gentlemen of commerce. You, sir, finance. Why, yes. Uh, I happen to be a banker. Yes, I know. You have that look, integrity. You're a merchant? Why, yes. I am a judge, but I also own the Virginia City Mercantile. How did you know? Ah, uh, my little secret, sir. Bartender, round for the house. And uh, a bottle for me, the finest. Well, what brings you to Virginia City, Mr. Ford? Business? Pleasure? Oh, a bit of both, a bit of both. It's certainly nice to have you here. It's an honor to have a gentleman of your quality visit Virginia City. Uh, thank you. Don't. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I must ask you to forget what you have just seen. Of course. I've been asking all over town. Nobody's seen Hiram. His office is locked up. You've got to help me. Uh, me, ma'am? Well, you're the sheriff, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I reckon I am. I, I don't feel very sure if at the moment, though, Miss Summers. I... Oh, call me sissy. I'd feel much more comfortable, Sheriff. Well, just call me hoss, so would I, ma'am. Then you'll do something. You'll help me. Well, ma'am, there ain't no use in getting all frazzled up. Old Hiram's probably just out running an errand around here in town somewhere. Oh, sh... I mean, hoss. You're just a big old fuzzy bear when it comes to boosting a girl's spirit. <laughs> Hey, look, Miss Summers, Sissy, I, why don't you just run on back to the hotel and, and I'll round old Hiram up and get him all spruced up. And... Well, I don't care about that. I just want to meet him. His letters were so strong. Just reading his wonderful words, I knew he was my man. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll round him up for you, ma'am. I'm going to insist that Hiram choose you as his best man. That's a promise. Ah, uh -huh. thank you, ma'am. Good day. Woo! That was close. Hiram, uh, what in tarnation are you doing under there? Well, I was waiting here for you. And when she come in, I just barely made it into the desk before she saw me. Oh, my, what a narrow escape. Hiram, <sighs> that little Miss Summers is a sweet little lady. If I thought for one minute that you were fiddling around, 
I swear, horse, I didn't. It was just so easy to write all them letters. Oh. Overdid it, huh? Told her you were 6'2"? Six 6'3". Six and rich and handsome. And that's why you're hiding from her. I'm weak and paunchy. Besides, I'm not ready for marriage. Babies, diapers, responsibilities. Yeah, all bridegrooms are like, you'll get over it. There's only one way out of this. You gotta put me in jail. If she thinks I'm a criminal, she won't have nothing to do with me. Oh, Hiram, you a criminal in jail? Why, that's ridiculous. My job is putting people in jail that are real criminals, that really break the law. All right, then. Then I'll just have to break the law. And I can't think of a better way to start than by attacking the sheriff. Now, you put up your dukes. Oh, Hiram. No doubt now, is it, Judge? You notice it's my property they're looking over? And drat. I wish I'd have bought it from you last year when you was offering it to me for 5000 I don't suppose that offer's still open, is it? Uh, the price has just gone up. Way up. Sheriff, before I shoot somebody. He could have blown our heads off. Look at the damage he's done. He'll pay for it. Yeah, you bet he'll pay for it. Give him 30 days to think about it. I'm the sheriff, and I'll decide what's going to be done with him. Right now, I'm going to take him home, pump some coffee down, and give him some talking to. Coffee? Uh -oh. Talking to? What kind of a sheriff are you? Listen, I demand that you punish this, this, this bull. So do I, and I know my rights. Of course you do. Come on. I ain't going home. Hey, you can't make me. Harm, I'm sure going to try. Hey. Here, Harm. Huh. Gulp up down and go home and sleep it off. I'll make up some excuse to Miss Sissy. You bring her in here now. Let her see what a no good drunken bum I really am. She'll go home a wiser girl. Harm, oh. things will appear a lot different than tomorrow after you've shaped up. And you're going to shape up, because you're going to meet her tomorrow. Whether you like it or not. Meet her tomorrow. But, Hoss, wait! I'm not gonna like it! Sorry, ma'am. I reading the paper didn't see your parasol there. <laughs> uh, are, are you looking for someone? No. You must be. Joe. Yeah. Joe. Yeah, yeah. My friends call me Little Joe. Huh. <laughs> oh, let me get that for you. No. You're hey, hey, well, hey. Shut up! Hey, shut up! Man, what you doing? Ma'am, that ain't a masher. That's my little brother, Joseph. Now, give her back her umbrella, Joe. Well, he certainly is forward. 
Yes, ma'am, he is. Sometimes so much so he falls right on his face. He's always putting his mouth in his foot. That's foot in his mouth. Yeah, well, you'd know about those things. Anyhow, Joseph, this is Miss Sissy Summers, and she's engaged to Hiram Peabody. Well, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Well, you're forgiven, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, thank you. I can't stay mad at the brother of my big old fuzzy bear, Sheriff. <laughs> Uh, d did you say big old fuzzy bear? Just cut it out, Joe. That's enough now. Cut it out. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm not going to tell anybody. Just a few close friends. Five or six. Ah, uh, candy. <laughs> See you, Fuzz. Oh, I, I shouldn't have said that, Hoss. I'm embarrassed. Oh, you. that's all right, ma'am. He's always writing me about something. Uh, more important things. I found her. Yeah, he just had some legal matters he had to tend to. Oh, of course. He wants to take care of all his business so that we can enjoy our honeymoon. Oh, the wonderful man. I just, I knew he'd be the thoughtful kind. Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing a little thinking, all right. Uh, you'll get to meet him in the morning. Oh, my knight in shining armor. Yeah, he'll be home all night shining his armor. What? A toast to these dear ladies for their kindness to a stranger. Uh, Fairfax? Uh, yes, sir. I shall remedy that at once, sir. It is our pleasure, Mr. Forbes. When we planned this picnic, it was so you wouldn't be a stranger. When we found that you were going to build a resort... Oh. Gentlemen, I thought you were going to forget what you were not meant to see. We did. Uh, that is, we didn't tell anybody but our wives. Not another soul, and they won't tell anyone. Uh, we saw you out there surveying that land. Uh, uh, we were just riding by. Um, since you're interested in that area, we thought it'd uh, be a good time now to have a talk about it. To be blunt, Mr. Forbes, we'd like to invest in your project. Yes, I I'll even take stock for the land. Uh, I was asking 25000 for that track, but uh, yes, I'll uh, take 20000 in stock. And All right. My firm is backed by a syndicate of Kansas City bankers. We are amply financed, and we will absolutely not sell any stock. Well, it seems to me that you would want local people to invest in your project. That way, the people of Virginia City would want you to succeed and would help. Mm, yes, well, that is a valid point. Uh-huh. Yes, I will need the cooperation of the local bankers. Fairfax? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Local investments, huh? Well, I'll have to have time to think that over. I'll give you my answer in the morning. <clears throat> in any case, you will all be my guests at the opening night party. Fine food, two orchestras from Paris, France, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Champagne, brandy. Fairfax. Yes, sir. And when I have finished this resort hotel, I shall go on to greater things. To San Francisco, Sandwich Islands, perhaps even China. Fairfax. Oh, it is my ambition to build a chain of resort hotels circling the globe like a glittering necklace. Fairfax. Yes, sir. If I may say so, sir, there are pressing matters at the hotel awaiting your attention immediately. Um, uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Pressing matters. Yes, pressing matters. Just a moment, please. Thank you very much. Don't forget, burn the trousers in your pay for them. Oh, after a day like this, I could do with some brandy. After destroying the wine at the picnic? I think not. Another drink and you would have built a hotel on the moon. Oh, those two chuckleheads would have bought some stock there. On the contrary, you could have spoiled everything. Those two chuckleheads are rich, important men. They lead, Virginia City follows. And another thing, you are at living again. From now on, you say the lines I wrote for you, not another word. Uh, just a little drink. After you polish my boots, memorize your speech for tomorrow, maybe. My syndicate is convinced that your crystal pure meadows and green... Green meadows and crystal pure air. Oh, yes, sir. 
Uh, my syndicate is convinced that your green meadows and crystal pure air. It's a little drink. Not yet. Oh. Oh. Mm. Out. 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 I'll kill myself. And I'll work you over good if you do. Now, I promised that Miss Sissy you're going to meet her in the morning, and you're going to. You're the law. You're supposed to protect me. Hiram, that's enough. Out. <sighs> what? Madame Morova, Bunko Games, Fraud and Swimming, Texas, Arizona, California. <laughs> $10,000 reward for murder, Art Merklin. Wanted for horse stealing Billy Marker, $100. Hi, Sheriff. Howdy, boys. Hey, well, we just saw Hiram run out of here like his coattail was on fire. What'd you do? Yeah, well, I... I had to send old Hiram along home. You know, your voice is a lot deeper now that you're the sheriff. It is? It is? Hey, you know, speaking of going home, we're, we're heading back. You want to ride with us? Well, I'd... I'd like to, boys, but... the weight of the badge, the responsibility of my town, I gotta stay here with it. It's heavy, it's heavy, yeah. I know. It's a shame, too, because you're gonna miss a fantastic meal. The hop singer's done a wonderful job. He, he's making a whole mess of chicken and dumplings and... Uh, well, I'll tell you, you're both going to miss it if you don't get out of here and leave me alone. I got things to do. Yeah, yeah, we better let you get back. Thanks for the protection. Yeah, feel safe. Do it, Harry. Night, you big old fuzzy bear, you. I don't believe it. No, no, you are. You're a big old fuzzy bear. No, no, I, I mean this. I don't believe what? You know, that, that nice gentleman, Mr. Forbes, that rode in on the stage with me? Yeah, he's a real nice man. What about him? I think I gotta arrest him. Of course you gotta arrest him with the sheriff, aren't you? What? There it is, the projected new hotel. Well, my syndicate is convinced that your green meadows and crystal pure air will bring floods of the wealthy from the smoke-clogged cities of the East. <sighs> Uh, now then, who's first? Step up. Mm, yes. I'll take uh, $100 worth of that stuff. Here you are, sir. Thank you. $1,000. There you are. Thousand dollars worth of certificates that will be worth double in no more than a year. Uh, Mr. Green will deposit the money in my account. Three hundred dollars. You want it? Three hundred dollars. One hundred. Yeah. Mr. Forbes. This is a stick-up. Reach for the sky or taste lead. Didn't you hear me? I said this is a stick-up. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard you, Hiram. Well, I confess, I did it. You did what? What? Peabody, have you completely lost your mind? Yesterday he shut up the saloon and you refused to arrest him. Maybe now you're convinced he's a criminal? Yeah, you heard him. Arrest me. Oh, Hiram, give me those things before you hurt somebody. Hiram, you're making a fool out of yourself. But, Hoss, you've got to put me in jail. I ain't going to do no such a thing. Oh, Hoss. Mr. Forbes. I realize that you're only a temporary sheriff, Hoss, but I'm certain that you understand that attempted bank robbery is a serious crime. 
Hiram here had no intention of robbing your bank. Hiram. Come on, get up in there and go home and no more shenanigans, you hear? But, horse, you gotta lock me up. I'm a mass menace. Of course he is. I am the one that has to decide what punishment goes with what crime. And in Hiram's particular case, the punishment is to not be locked up in jail. Hiram, you break that little lady's heart and I'll break every bone in your body, you hear me? Now you get that silly thing off your face and go on home and hate yourself. Go on. Well, in all my days, I have never seen such a rank miscarriage of justice. Scott Free, I can't believe it. Dereliction of duty, that's what it is. With Cartwright for a sheriff, the, every crook in the country has a license to rob and cheat us. That ain't true, Mr. Franklin. As a matter of fact, I came here to arrest a real criminal. A rotten, no-good-for-nothing, dirty, thieving scoundrel. One who is ready to really skin you. You're under arrest, Mr. Forbes. I'm taking you to jail. Let me see this. Well, there's not even a mention of a Cavendish Forbes here, not even a picture. You've got nothing to go by. No, oh, nothing to stand on, huh? No picture, huh? Well, there's a description here. Listen to this. It says here that Farthing Gill Frobish, or whatever name he was using at that time, is six feet high. Stand up, Mr. Forbes. It goes on to say that he weighs 200 plus pounds and is stout. And that's pretty obvious. I do hope, sir, that you're not going to allow the misguided zeal of this inexperienced lawman to spoil your relationship with our community. I'm certain you can show him the error of his ways. To err is human, to forgive divine. I'm gonna do the human thing this time. The divine can wait until I get a message back from Butte, Montana. I done telegraphed that sheriff over there about you, sir, and you're under arrest. Come along, Mr. Forbes. Why, this is an outrage. At least you can wait until you get your answer, which I am certain will completely clear Mr. Forbes. And which I am certain will give him time to skip out of town with all the money he's collected, too. No, not a chance. You're the one that told me that my job was to protect the community, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, come along, Mr. Forbes, you're under arrest. If I am not released within an hour, I shall cancel the plans for the hotel. Come on, Fairfax. I'm sorry, sir, but the duties of a valet do not include the humility of Durin's vile. I am sure that the jail is very filthy, so do be careful with your trousers, sir. Come along, Mr. Forbes. Mr. Cartwright, you haven't heard the last of this. Not by a long shot. Sure got this whole town in an uproar. When you botch things up, you botch them up good. You got any idea what Forbes' hotel would mean to this town? Yes, I do, Joseph. Do you have any idea what it would do for this town if he absconded with all the funds that he's stolen, including Candy's hundred dollars? You see, they'd blame me for that, too. All right, all right, suit yourself. You know, I've heard of towns where a lynch mob just comes to the jail and pulls the prisoner out, but I think it's gonna be the first time I've ever seen him pull the sheriff out. <clears throat> Joseph, you run along. I am perfectly capable of handling any situation that might arise here. Except that one. Handle it for me. Handle what? Where is the sheriff? We want to see him immediately. Yes, sheriff. Come on, it's right here. Mr. Paul, Captain's coming. Mr. Cartwright, I want to go for that cell door immediately. Mrs. Green, I have no intentions of doing no such thing. Oh, we are well aware of your stupidity on that score, but we have no intention of disobeying the law. But there is no law that says that that poor, persecuted man cannot be allowed a few of the comforts of life. Now, where are the keys? I will not be intimidated by a bunch of keys. There you are. Oh, thanks. Joseph, you rock. Sheriff, give us a hand. Nice. Lovely ladies, absolutely lovely. Your generosity has warmed the cockles of my heart. Dear Mr. Forbes, we wanted you to know that every decent person in Virginia City is behind you, excepting one misguided creature, a fool who allows known criminals to run rampant while he is harasses a fine gentleman. We hope you haven't changed your mind. Well, in the face of Mr. Cartwright's insult to my integrity, I must confess I did consider uh, looking for some uh, friendlier uh, town. 
However, how can I refuse you? You ladies have been so gracious. Yes, I will continue to sell stocks. Anyone who wants to buy stocks, I will do business right here. Pass the word along, Fairfax. If you say so, sir. Be very careful of the trousers, sir. Well, I gotta tell you, I think you're making a mistake about this Forbes fella. Look, if he knew the jig was up, if he was a con man, he wouldn't keep selling stock while he's in jail. Joe, I know exactly what I'm doing. I can handle it. Right. You know best. I just wonder what the penalty is for false arrest. Today, there ain't no answer to your telegram. Not that there's any doubt what it'll be, Cartwright. You used to call me horse. That's before you almost ruined the sweetest setup this town ever had. Ali. Irving, Norman. Sheriff Cartwright. Oh, hi, Miss Summers. I thought you were going to find Hiram for me. You mean he hadn't... Well, you see, ma'am, I've been terribly busy, and I just... He doesn't want to see me. <laughs> or he has seen me, and he's changed his mind. And I sold my military shop, and I came out here. I thought I was going to be married. No. <laughs> oh, ma'am, don't be upset. Why, there's there's lots of lots of fish in the ocean. Maybe. What's a woman my age going to use for bait? to deliver night wires in the morning, but I know you're anxious to read this one. From the expression on your face, Albert, I don't think I am. I don't imagine you are, but I rather savor the words myself. <clears throat> From Sheriff A.J. Mulligan. Yeah, yeah, well, what does it say? Just tell me what it says. Sylvester Cromwell was apprehended by me Six months ago, he stood trial and was sent to territorial prison for 10 years. Thanks a lot, Albert. Thanks a bunch. Never let him go, Joe. The man's a crook, and I know it. Oh, will you stop worrying about it? Eat some chicken. A hot thing fix is special for you. It's fantastic. Hey, Hunter. You gotta eat something. That'll burn it. Joe, I only did what I thought was right. Well, everybody knows that. They didn't expect that much from a weekend sheriff. Have some chicken. Yeah. Look here. This wanted poster describes Forbes right down to the clothes he wears. Oh, well, maybe this Forbes and this Forbes fellow had the same tail. Who knows? Yeah, it says here he even traveled with his own valet. What's a valet? Valet? No, valet. That's a manservant. Mm. A manservant? Mm-hmm. There's nothing unusual about that. A man's got a lot of money, he can afford himself a manservant. No matter how much money you have, you can't afford this kind of check him.
just going to lunch, Cartwright. That's Sheriff Cartwright, and don't you forget it. I won't have to remember long the way things are going. Yeah? You get this telegraph sent off pronto, or you ain't going to be a plague for long, neither. Boy. Oh, boy. You don't know when you're lit, do you? All right. All right. I'll send it. I'll send it. Hey, where you been? You left this place like a tornado here or something. I'm ready for some of that chicken now. Oh. Does that do it? That does it. Praise be. I'd rather have this one. <laughs> Hey, Sheriff, you go on back over to the hotel and bring Sissy over here. When she sees me like this, maybe she'll go away. And I'll pay for the lamp, of course. You betcha you will, and you're going to stay in there 30 days. 30 days. That's right. Hey, Sheriff, what if she won't go away? Can you make it 60? Yes, this is the exact spot on which the hotel will be built. Thank you, ma'am. Fairfax, get the lady your bonds. Up. How are you, sir? Good to see you. May I be of assistance, sir? I'm Albert Higgins, telegraph operator. Uh, if you say so, sir. I'm not supposed to do this, but... <laughs> Cartwright sent this telegram a while back. I think it's just terrible the way he picks on fine Mr. Forbes. Uh, with your permission, I shall bring this to my master. Uh, you let him know I brought you this. He'll remember me. I bought $50 worth of stocks. Of course he'll remember you. He likes to see young men get ahead. His only wish is to take, uh, uh, make the world a much better place. Uh, uh, if you say so, sir. Excuse me, sir. Pardon me? Uh, Judge Franklin, uh, Mr. Green. Yes, Mr. Ford. You have a most efficient telegraph operator, gentlemen. I just received a message from my syndicate in Kansas City that dictates my immediate return. Not trouble? Oh, no, indeed. They're more anxious than ever to get construction underway. I'm afraid that uh, a good many of your good friends will have to wait till my return to purchase their stocks. I, I shall, of course, take the money that's already been invested with me uh, in cash. All cash, Mr. Forbes? Why, there's over a hundred thousand. Won't a bank draft do? Well, I'm afraid I will find it rather difficult to convince my syndicate to share in the profits with any of you good people. Uh, now, cash talks. A bank draft drawn on a bank unknown to them uh, might make them hesitate. Makes sense, Green. Of course it does. You think I'm inexperienced in finance? I'll get it ready for you right away. Fairfax, uh, find out what time the eastbound stage leaves. I already know, sir. In two hours, three o'clock. Thank you, gentlemen. Just uh, take it all over to the stage office, please. Hello, Miss Summers. Now, looks like you're leaving us, huh? The sooner the better. Since I've been here, Hiram Peabody hasn't shown his face once. Yeah, it'll be pretty hard for him. He's in jail. Right over there. What? He's in jail. So that's where he's been hiding. Oh, and your conniving brother has been in on it all this time? Oh, pretending to be my friend? Wait till I get a hold of him. <clears throat> a lawman's lot is, is not a happy one. Anything yet? No. And why don't you quit pestering me? That, Bernard, has been plenty of time for an answer. That stage is going to leave in five minutes. Well, now, ain't that a shame? As if anything was going to come of your telegram anyway. Well, that might be it. 
As if it was going to do you any good. Albert, can't you move a little faster? I'm moving fast as I can. I'm ruined. My life savings. My friends, my good friends, I shall return shortly to build the hotel which will bring great wealth to your fair city. The sooner I leave, the sooner I'll return. Move along, Robert. You're under arrest, the both of you. I beg your pardon, sir. You bumbling boo. Now, Cartwright, you leave them alone. They're crooks, and I'm logging them up. Uh, tell him, sir. Tell him. Tell him that if he doesn't release you immediately, there'll be no hotel built in Virginia City. <laughs> If you don't release us immediately, there will be no hotel built in Virginia City. Did you hear that, Cartwright? You're going to be my I've got the The last time you're going to Cartwright, and unless you want to get yourself beat to a pulp, you're going to apologize to Mr. Forbes. Mr. Forbes? Fairfax? Mr. Forbes? Oh, where's Mr. Forbes? Where are they? Where could they be? Oh, Mr. Forbes! Strange, ain't it? There's an explanation. Mr. Forbes is no crook. He is... He is a crook. Mr. Forbes is a crook. But he ain't the main one. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It's Fairfax. He's the main crook. He's the brains. He hires them dummies and puts some clothes on them and makes them say what he wants them to say. And then when all of the suckers get wise and start putting them in jail, Fairfax walks quietly out of town with the money. Give me the bag. I stand a better chance alone. We can meet up later. No, you don't. You said that the last man that wore these pants, and he was in jail for a year and a half. Come back, you thief! <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. Where are they going? Hey, I, I got a feeling there goes your hundred dollars. Not my hundred dollars. I'll cut them off. Right. Come back! Come back! Moreover, I thought I'll handle you... this. Well, if you knew they were crooks, why'd you let them get away? Why did I? As district judge, I order you to go after them. Nail them, Sheriff. Well, what are you waiting for? Mr. Franklin, Judge Franklin, you seem to forget. I ain't the sheriff no more. Mr. Green done took my badge. Well, let's go get him ourselves. Look, are you going to let this turn into a vigilante town, Cartwright? Now, you were made acting sheriff, and no one can take your badge away except myself. Now, if you don't go after them, I will. But, Your Honor... Your Honor? Your Honor? J judge Franklin. Your Judge... You, Hiram Peabody, take Sissy Summers as your lawful wedded wife? I do. The ring, please. The ring! Oh!
place the ring on her finger, please, and repeat after me. With this ring, I do thee wed. With this ring, I do thee wed. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Sheriff, how long are you going to keep me in here, anyhow? 30 days. Next time you hit somebody, don't hit the judge. 